Let's bring in California GOP Congressman Devin Nunes, ranking member of the House Intel Committee, member of the Ways and Means Committee. I don't know if he can play guitar. He probably can. He does a lot of <laughs> things. Uh, but, Congressman, thank you so much for joining us uh, on this Easter weekend. We want to go to Capitol Hill, uh, where you guys are, the president is talking about what he wants, a targeted small business package, maybe uh, payroll tax relief, uh, infrastructure bill. What's possible? What are you guys aiming for here? Well, the real need that uh, Senator McConnell tried to get passed on unanimous consent this week was just a plus up to the Paycheck Protection Program. This is the program that's loaning money to businesses so they can continue to pay employees so that they don't have to go on the unemployment rolls. Hmm. Wanted to load it up uh, with a lot more junk, which we know they did last time. You may recall uh, they plussed up money for the Kennedy Center. And now, look, last time I checked, not being built into some hospital to handle COVID patients. So, uh, look, it, it's unfortunate, but at this point, I think the key is going to be when do we get the country back to work? Uh, and can parts of the country go back to work? We're starting to see states like Texas, they're going to develop their own plan. Hopefully, other states will follow suit along with cities and counties so that we can get America back to work. Uh, and in the meantime, we just need to make sure that the programs that we passed a couple weeks ago uh, are fully funded so that the American, so that every American that wants to participate in the program, in fact, can. You, you mentioned the importance of, you know, getting America back to work as soon as possible. Um, the president says that he's assembling another task force that's focused on reopening our economy. In your opinion, who needs to be a part of that task force? What type of minds? Well, what I would say on this is, is that uh, the best the best way we can handle this is closest to the people. So, recommendation: it's the federal government stepping in uh, where we can, whether it's through this Paycheck Protection Program or whether it's with uh, masks and other equipment, ventilators that we. Can. Uh, but the way we're going to fix all of this in the long run is be able to handle these outbreaks quickly. Uh, so one of the keys to that is going to be making sure that each at the county level or the city level, depending on the size of your county or the size of the city that you live in, we need to make sure that there's a place that everybody knows that if you if you come up positive uh, with the virus, that you can go to that facility if you need to be either one tested or two if you have to spend some time in the hospital. What we do know about this now is that it's a it's a very contagious virus, probably one of the in modern history probably one of the most contagious virus. Viruses. But at the same time, uh, you know, a lot of people don't have to go to the hospital, which is a good thing. So even though we're prepared for that now, in the long run, we're going to have to look at what are those plans at the local level. And look, Pete knows a lot about this. Uh, you know, it's, we need to look at this a lot like a military operation, uh, which Pete would be very familiar with. Yeah, the Congressman, let me jump in here for a second, though, because you talk about responding, and I want to take you a little bit to the World Health Organization, because it appears now that had they declared this a pandemic earlier, had they not been telling us that human-to-human -human transmission wasn't possible, according to Chinese scientists, that we could have responded quicker, now there are calls for the head of the WHO to either resign or testify. Where do you come down? <laughs> Well, look, uh, all of these organizations, uh, they all, they're all do-good organizations. They all, ha they all mean well. Uh, the problem is, is that they become very bloated and, and very political. I actually toured the World, World Health Organization many years ago, uh, and quite frankly, I, I walked out of there saying, my God, I hope we never have a pandemic because I don't think these guys are going to be able to handle it. The challenge we have here is it looks like they're taking the side of, of China in this. And, you know, look, I, I'm not trying to be uh, anti-China or anything like that that the mainstream media wants to try to accuse people of. But look, the Chinese Communist Party is definitely responsible for all of this. And along with the World Health Organization, who essentially acted as uh, kind of like baiting and uh, uh, letting them uh, do this. Uh, in not doing their actual job. And I think the American people uh, expect for people to held, be held accountable, especially the amount of money that we send there every year. Amen. So very quickly, just to follow up on that, because the timeline's undoubted, will Congress be taking action? Will you seek to take action to hold the WHO accountable? 
Well, you've heard the president that he says he's going to withhold funds. Uh, he can do that. He has a right to do that. Uh, Congress should be supportive of that. Uh, however, you know, uh, we've already seen, remember, the Democrats control the House of Representatives. So, uh, you know, they can, they can block. But I think that all Republicans are united that we want answers, number one, from the World Health, Health Organization, and number two, we want answers from the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah, it's shocking that that would not be bipartisan, Congressman. The Democrats wouldn't want that, too. They, they say they want a 9-11-style commission. It ought to be about the Communist Chinese. Thank you for your clarity on that. Uh, I want to get your, your comments, though. Uh, Laura, our own Laura Ingram did a three-part interview, fantastic, with, with the AG, William Barr. And one of the things he talked about is there's, there's something far more troubling about the Russia investigation. Watch what he had to say. We'll get your response. What can you tell us about the state of John Durham's investigation? My own view is that uh, the evidence uh, shows that we're not dealing with just uh, mistakes or sloppiness. There was something far more troubling here, and we're going to get to the bottom of it. And if people uh, broke the law and we can establish that with the evidence, they will be prosecuted. And this has been behind the headlines because of coronavirus, but what do you know, sir? Well, we just saw uh, last night uh, there were, there were uh, uh, redactions uh, that were finally revealed to the American people. So there's footnotes that now the American people are beginning to learn more. Uh, you know that the House Republicans have sent over eight criminal referrals. Uh, to the Attorney General. Uh, we expect those to be uh, monitored, looked at, evaluated. Uh, we know that Durham is, is running this investigation, but the key is going to be, you know, can you build the evidence in order to make prosecutions uh, against the, you know, there's a whole bunch of folks that we've referred, right, with the eight referrals that we've done. But I would say that people should go and look at those footnotes that are, that are, that are now public. OK, mm -hmm. because likely we're going to have more criminal referrals based on these. And so what, what we know now, uh, the, the bottom line is, is what was revealed last night, uh, is that we know that, that the Democrats were spreading disinformation, Russian disinformation, which we have been saying the whole time. It never made sense that you would, you would have a, a political operative uh, like the Clinton campaign working with Fusion GPS, hiring a foreign, former foreign spy that they know is supposedly getting information from Russian intel folks, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yep. that's, that doesn't pass the straight face test. Interesting. Mm -hmm. A lot more to come. The work continues. Congressman Devin Nunes, thank you so much for joining us on this Easter weekend. Thank we you. Appreciate thank it. you. Thanks.